be a general fund expense. And I think we would see quite a, quite a bit diminished returns if we actually have to pay general fund money to go out and find out that people are already um, trying to do the best that they can within their circumstances. Uh, Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. I have a clarification for Representative Gren and then a question. The 98% you mentioned, you said those were statistics you uh, received. Where do those statistics come from? Um, I, we can get some sources from you, um, just some you know, information that, we've, that our office received and I think our coalition you know, looked at. We can, we can get that to you for sure. And then my question, um, your bill dealing with uniform rule, your uniform rules change and then um, your um, voting uh, Bill, I think, is on the Senate side um, in a committee today. And um, I, I wondered if you'd gotten any um, legal opinion as to whether that's considered um, substantially similar or if that, if that passes, if that would have any effect on the um, potential ballot initiative. So the, uh, the uniform rules change regarding voting on that conflict of interest, that, that um, resolution actually failed last year in the House. It didn't have the required two-thirds vote. Um, but... Uh, HB 44, conflict of interest, uh, that did pass the House, obviously, oh, yeah, over in the Senate this afternoon. Um, really encouraged that the Senate wants to at least discuss it and talk about it. Um, I think it's, a, it's an important thing that helps build trust with the public, that uh, helps us as legislators be more transparent. Um, you know, we, anything that um, we can show that our, uh, our, our jobs, our, our financial um, means are, are open and we have nothing to hide, I think that that helps the public know that we're doing their work when we're here in Juneau. So really encouraged that uh, the Senate um, wants to discuss it and give it a fair shake. I'm uh, uh, optimistic that it, that it might go through, actually. Um, regarding of how that might uh, impact um, an initiative or something that I'm behind, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I can't talk about that when I got my legislative pin on. Um, but um, it's, it's something, it's something um, that we're looking into. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Uh, Representative Ledoux, wanted to get your thoughts on the smoking ban. Is that likely to pass out of Rules Committee? <clears throat> well, we'll have, have to see whether it passes out of the Rules uh, Committee. I'm open to negotiations. And then Representative Keto, in Labor and Commerce, uh, the distilleries bill, um, what's happening with that on your side? Um, thank you, James. And we've been working pretty hard on our uh, PERS TERS retirement bill, which we just passed out yesterday, and trying to get some of the uh, sunsets out. So I have not had a chance to take a look at the legislation yet. Um, we have a full calendar this week, and we're looking at schedules for next week. And so it's one of those things where, as the bills come before me, I start looking at them. That one I haven't started looking at yet. Mariah, do you have a question? Hi, uh, my name is Mariah, and I'm with um, UAA as a student intern with uh, Legislative Digest. Um, I actually wanted to follow up on um, SB 63 with Representative Adu and um, ask if there is any timing or when um, SB 63 might uh, come out of the Rules Committee. There's no nothing set. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Steve Quinn with Channel 11. Uh, back to Representative Ledoux. You said you're open to negotiations over the smoking bill. What's in play here? I mean, what is, is there something about the bill that uh, concerns you? That uh, well, there's a lot in the bill that concerns me, particularly that it's cramming down the throats of municipalities that may not want the bill, a statewide. Uh, program. And so I'm open to talking about an opt-out sort of situation. Uh, Becky Bohr with AP again for Representative Keto. Um, in December, Senator Wilson said he wanted to, he wanted the Legislative Council to release a video that was a subject of a report that was released by Skiff Lobal later. Um, what is the status of that request? And I guess second, the, the legislative policy regarding surveillance videos, um, do you think that that is a policy that needs to in any way be revisited? So that situation, um, my 
in, in my opinion, has been resolved. The issue that we have at Ledge Council is I have statutory and policy authority to do certain things. Um, it is explicit in policy that surveillance video shall not be released, but can be viewed by individual legislators upon request and is available to be viewed by certain legislative employees in order to make sure that criminal activity hasn't taken place. Um, beyond that, I don't have authority to say that this is something that can go out to the public. That's only something that the entire legislature can, and the entire legislature through Ledge Council had adopted this policy in order to protect um, the privacy and security of people working inside this building. Uh, Representative Tuck, um, a question about SB 63 for you. That bill now has 21 people in the House, at least, that I believe support it. That's usually the boundary that gets it on the floor for a vote. What are your thoughts on bringing it to a vote? Well, um, there are concerns with the bill right now. We're right now trying to uh, work with everyone and trying to come up with some sort of resolution so that we can get uh, hopefully a unanimous vote on the floor. Additional questions? You can wrap up. Okay, well, I just want to point out you guys are probably wondering what happened with the uh, unemployment uh, benefits bill that uh, got pulled back into rules yesterday. Um, we're just uh, answering some questions right now. There's some questions on TVEP. There's some questions on the STEP. Um, and so uh, as I've been um, working this bill, uh, just to let you know, Alaska is 53rd in the nation behind uh, Puerto Rico and D.C. in unemployment insurance compensation. Uh, we're dead last. Um, and uh, what this would do is bring it up to the U.S. Department of Labor's uh, standard of uh, recommendation of 50 percent of the of the average wages in um, for compensation for a state and uh, so it'd be take us up from three hundred and seventy dollars per week up to five hundred and ten dollars per week and then an automatic feature that that gets recalculated annually so we don't have to keep revisiting this over and over again it's been revisited once in 22 years and uh, so Alaskans right now Alaska is one of the most seasonal states that there is we're the furthest northern state and uh, whether it's construction, mining, oil and gas, uh, tourism, we're very seasonal up here. And we need to be able to sustain families and communities, especially with this, the tough economic times that we have right now, so we don't leave some of those skilled, have some of those uh, skilled workforce leave the state of Alaska, so when things pick up, they're ready, available to go back to work. Um, as I've gone through this, I Googled uh, the economic benefits of unemployment insurance, and I was surprised to learn that uh, Number one economic stimulus package for economic recovery is mass transportation projects, infrastructure projects for mass transportation. Number two is unemployment benefits. For every dollar that goes into unemployment benefits, it's a return of investment of $1.68. During the Bush administration, it was $2 at that time. And uh, when you look at, uh, uh, I, I compare that to a tax cut, for every dollar in tax cuts, that creates about 10,700 jobs nationwide. For every dollar in unemployment benefits increase, that's about 19,000 jobs. So almost double that due to the fact that when people are on unemployment, they're spending that full dollar, which is keeping money in the economy, keeping things flowing, and keeping goods and services happening. Uh, whereas with a, a tax break or tax dollar tax cut, um, people only spend half of that. They put the rest of it away. So this is a part of our economic stimulus that we're trying to do for the state of Alaska, trying to help maintain property values, trying to maintain um, a, a good flowing economy, and that's the reason why this coalition was put together, was to, again, uh, save the economy and protect jobs. One and, shot. Any other questions? So with that, we thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing all of you again next week.